I want to do a 50,000 kilometer review of my 2018 Honda Goldwing Tour DCT airbag. But first, let me tell you a little bit about my riding history. I started riding Honda Goldwings in 1982. I had been riding on the street since 1977. Uh, I've had uh, lots of Goldwings since 1982. I've had 1100s, 1200s, 1500s and three 1800s, uh, all that I bought new before this 2018 Goldwing that I bought new. But the 2007 Goldwing new in 2008, kept it until 13. I was wanting a new bike at that time and I was hoping that for 2012, that Goldwing was you know, gonna come up with something different. Everybody was hoping for that, you know, six speed, 2000 cc's, you know, all these uh, rumors and none of them came about. And so it ended up that uh, I did want a new bike and um, I wanted something different. Um, but of course, you know, the 2012 was pretty much what I already had. So I thought, I don't want that. And a buddy was interested in my Corvette convertible. And he had just about three weeks previous bought himself a 2007 Harley Davidson Road Glide Custom. Um, really nice bike. And I told him, if you don't buy it, I'm buying it. So he bought it but he could not get used to the handlebars turning and the fairing not turning. He just couldn't get used to that. So I said, look, I'll make you a deal. I'll take your bike, a four x four Chevy pickup and some cash and you can have the Corvette. So it ended up that we made a deal and I rode both bikes for the next couple of months. I decided to give Harley a try for a new bike. So I bought a 2013 Electroglide Ultra Limited Anniversary Edition. Now, the dealer was having problems getting the Bluetooth and the GPS and all that sort of stuff that I was adding on to the bike working properly. But as it turned out for 2014, Harley Davidson came out with all that stuff factory stock on the bike. So I made the change. I traded up to the 2014, which I would put 27,000 kilometers on the 13 in seven months. Anyway. Then I went up to the 2014, had it for a couple of years, put uh, 62,000 kilometers on it in two years. And um, I decided at that point, the 17 had come out with their new engine that Harley had, the Milwaukee 8. I was pretty impressed by the technology and stuff that they had finally put into their engine. And uh, so I went ahead and I made the trade up for the 17 and I decided to go for the full pull, get the CVO Limited which had all the bells and whistles and I mean it was a beautiful bike I loved it I had it for about a year and a half and in that you know basically the last half of that year and a half I started having problems with arthritis in my left thumb got that bike loved it hung on to it hung on to it tried to make it work wasn't working Honda came out with the DCT well it was a no-brainer I needed the automatic so I traded in the Harley took a loss on it and uh, traded straight across for the uh, Honda Goldwing. And uh, I've had uh, the Honda Goldwing um, since uh, July 26, 2018. And I've got 53,000 kilometers on it now, I think. And um, really enjoying it. It's basically, it's been smiles ever since I got it. And uh, just really enjoying it. Um, I'm now back to putting some kilometers on my bike, obviously. And uh, I've had a couple of good trips and I wanted to do this longer kilometer review uh, instead of me, you know, hearing about, well, I've put 5,000 kilometers on my bike now in two years. Here's my review. People, I think, want to know the reliability of the longer term, how it's going to last, what it's going to be like, you know, what can they expect or what can they expect not to happen that happened on other bikes, that kind of thing. You know, basically, here's an idea of what sort of things I went through uh, in respect to, um, let's call them faults, other than very minor software things, you know, uh, that people have talked about, headsets not connecting properly or whatever. Once you get down how to do it properly, follow the directions that are out there, whether it be in the manual or the YouTube videos, just follow them and it works, okay? And I haven't had any issues since then. Now, one thing that happened one time is I was riding along in, uh, I think I was in fourth gear or fifth gear maybe even, and then I made a quick right and then started to go up a hill. It downshifted to third, but it wouldn't shift anywhere else. It wouldn't downshift anymore. 
Uh, it wouldn't upshift even if I was using the manual switches. I couldn't get it to shift. I shut the bike off. I started up and it was like back in neutral, but it was showing a weird display on the dash where normally it would show an N or the gear that you were in. And um, so anyways, I reinitialized the DCT and boom, everything was fine again. And it's been fine since. That's never happened to me again. That was one time in 50,000 plus kilometers. So I'm not complaining. Now, um, the other thing that was, you know, fairly uh, major and a lot of people gripe about is it does say in the manual, I think it's 38,000 kilometers you're supposed to inspect and adjust your valves if need be. Well, mine was starting to get noisy, you know, in the early 30s. And um, by the time I reached uh, 44,000 kilometers, I took it in the, the dealer and uh, they shimmed it for me. Um, there was about eight, mostly exhaust valves that needed adjustment. Uh, they shimmed them all up, got it all done, and uh, that was fine. Uh, you know, the ticking more or less went away um, right after that. Uh, the bike performs fine. I've changed the air filter only once on this bike. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not complaining about the bike at all. I think it's been great. Uh, it's been a really good, reliable bike for me. Okay, people want to know about long distance riding. So I'm one that in about two weeks, I'll do, you know, anywhere between 10 and 15, 16,000 kilometers in a couple of weeks. So that's a fair bit of riding. Um, you know, like the first summer that I had the bike, my wife and I left Vancouver, BC, and we rode down the Oregon coast, touched into California. Then we went back inland and came back up through California and Oregon, um, basically, middle to east side kind of thing of those states and uh, then into Washington and back home. It was a great trip, uh, absolutely no problems, no issues, uh, nothing at all. And then, um, you know, the next spring I met a buddy in Calgary, Alberta, and we rode down in through uh, Glacier National Park, sorry, in Montana. And then we went down in through Idaho, East Oregon, Washington, back home into Vancouver. And that was, uh, I guess that was nine days. Um, that was a great little trip. Uh, again, no problems, no issues. Just one up on that one. Um, you know, of course the other one with my wife was two up. Then I did another two up with my wife. That was a big one. Um, I rode by myself to Denver, Colorado, met up with some buddies there. We went riding up Pikes Peak and we went up to the top there and then from Pikes Peak um, it ended up that I had dinner with them and then I headed east towards Nashville Tennessee uh, they went west back towards Vancouver I met my wife in uh, in Nashville we spent a day there we'd been there before so it was just kind of a, a nice little quick day stop and then uh, got on the bike we rode back um, from Nashville to Vancouver BC and uh, it was again no problems no issues nothing going on weird um, my wife had always said that with the older gold wings she felt just a little uneasy on the back when I would lean into corners and stuff and uh, then when I got the Harleys she said that she felt that one with the bike and I thought wow this is great right and uh, then, of course, when I had to change for the Honda, it was all about me and how I felt and what I needed to be able to ride. And she got on the back of the bike and, um, you know, we did a couple of uh, day trips. And uh, she said she felt the same on the uh, new Goldwing as she did on the uh, Harleys that I had. She, she said she really feels that one and relaxed and comfortable and uh, all was good. Um, you know, now on another note, um, when I went to the Harleys, I kind of slowed down a little bit in my riding style, let's call it. Uh, still scraping corners and all that kind of stuff with the Harley, you know, I mean, it, it was a lot of fun. Um, but uh, I wasn't going as fast uh, down the road. And uh, then I got back on the uh, Goldwing and all of a sudden I'm going fast again because this is a nice light sport touring bike. You put it in sport mode and whether I'm by myself or with my wife, She's fine with it in sport mode as well. And we just get into it and have some fun on the twisty roads. 
Um, you know, the back of my bike, I've had a decal made that says Twisty Seeker because that's what I'm all about. So, you know, I, I, I love this bike. Um, I do ride it a little more aggressively, but I do drive for a living and I want to keep my license. So I'm not crazy stupid. And uh, I think the bike could be crazy stupid if I want it to for sure. But that's not what I want. So uh, I have added a few different things to the bike, uh, quite a bit of different things to the bike since I got it. So let me just grab the uh, camera here and I'm going to face it away from me and do a walk around and show you some of the stuff. So let's start here around the uh, side. You can see I put the 2020 grab rails on here. My wife really finds that she can hang on to them. I find it way easier for putting it up on the center stand. Not that I really had a problem, but it's just, it's nice to have something to grab onto. I can tie things down to it. Uh, it looks good. I'm happy with it. Of course, being the airbag, it comes with the deluxe armrest. Put the backrest on it. As you can see down here, I've changed the stock pegs to something else that was basically for the GL1800. Not necessarily for this year, but any of the GL1800s. And it went right on like no problem at all. Then the Rivco Highway pegs. And they just fold away like that. And wind deflectors. I've added mirrors. I've added extra turn signals. Of course, when you turn them on, they just flash on the side there. I've got turn signals down here as well. This is a hyperlight, and I really like them. I've got it mounted so that from the side, as you're coming up beside the bike, you see them flashing away. I've also got them on the trunk. You can see back here, I've got hyperlights back there. And antenna on the left side. That was a dummy antenna. Uh, CB antenna is actually on this side. But I always like the look of two antennas on these bikes. So I put a second one on just as a dummy. And the other day I picked up a little Y cable that actually connected this antenna into the hidden electric antenna for the AM FM. So now I've got those two antennas running AM FM. I haven't done a road test yet, other than just around the block to see how uh, the difference is with reception, but I think it's pretty different. You can see I've added a cigarette lighter, a couple of switches. This here is uh, an XM satellite radio portable. These bikes in Canada for 2018 didn't have it there. Um, it's not part of the sound system on the bike. So I added an extra antenna. And of course, come around the front, you can see I've got three sets of driving lights. The bottom ones are Rivco. Then the middle square one is Run D, right? So that's Run hyphen D, and I got them on Amazon. Then the top one is a Pia, and they're kind of pointed out towards the side to light up the ditch for the deer at night. Front fender extension. I do have Flexi here that covers over the headlights because I don't want to break a headlight, that's for sure. This here is a dash camera setup. I have a front camera and rear camera and it's all into the same setup which is mounted right here on my handlebar. Then of course a cup holder. Oh, there's RAM mount for the iPhone, which of course gives me the uh, CarPlay and all that kind of stuff. Um, what else we got here? Okay, I have had my seat customized. It's got gel in the front here. It's been narrowed in the front for my legs because I'm a little bit short. You can see here we've added a couple of inches into the stock material to move it forward. Again, all for me. Then I've got the Honda trunk rack, the Honda rear light. Now that I don't have hooked up as a running light, it's just hooked up as a brake light that flashes. Okay. And then down here, you can see I've got a couple of little lights here. 
those were actually something that I had bought for my oh look at that there's the rear camera lens I had actually bought them for uh, my Harley and I took them off when I traded in the Harley and they're a Harley Davidson product and I just wired them in on this bike what I've done is I've connected a trailer wiring harness and that's what runs all my extra red lights accent lights as well as my tail lights and turn signals and brake lights that have added extra to the bike. Yeah, they're all running off of that harness. I also have a fuse block terminal. That's running the extra things like the dash camera, the XM satellite radio, the power for the switches for the driving lights is off of that. Uh, you know, I'm trying not to touch into the CAN bus system at all. So that's pretty much what I've added extra to the bike except for one thing here that I didn't show you yet. This is the decal I was talking about on the back, it says Twisty Seeker. We got a little scratch here, so I actually just had somebody make up a little decal that says DCT, put that on it. Oh, look, two full face helmets. I've had people say that they cannot get two full face helmets in the trunk of their bike. This is the stock trunk lid. And then I've had people say, and then if you got your headset mounted on there, there's absolutely no way you're gonna get it. And look, there's my headset. All I did is I just put this helmet here. That's the bottom. This is the front, okay? Put it in, tilt a little bit. Then you take your second helmet and you bring it in like so, and then tilt it into the other one so that the nose goes in there. Just wiggle around a little bit. So you just put the helmets in there and close it up. Just open it up. And I just wanted to show you something else that I added. See over there, I got a little amplifier. That's a 300 watt amplifier. And I do have a video on YouTube showing that being installed with four five and a quarter inch speakers. We had to make a little cutout in the back so that the speaker would recess further into the hole. Let me just show you again how easy it is to put the helmets in. Just put that one in, turn it, take the second one, make sure that your little antenna is closed and just turn it in. Wiggle, wiggle, make sure everything's kind of in there right. That's it. Closed, done, signed, sealed, delivered. And that's it. So just give you a little bit better view of the whole bike. I'll just back up a little bit, try and get it in the full screen. Still backing up. There we go. That's it. Have a great day. Shiny up, rubber down, and keep smiling.